Hi, this is David Gorham, and I'm here with Jeannie. And we're just having a little chat in our living room, and we're talking about stained glass patterns. Uh, Jeannie, have you noticed how many people, when they're considering uh, becoming students, will kind of be hesitant because they're afraid that they're not very good artists? Right. Well, they will compare themselves with um, with people who have done these gorgeous windows and and uh, very nice of them. Sometimes they'll compare themselves to us and say, "Oh, I just couldn't do that well." And no, that's that's just not the case. Yeah, you know, uh, Jeannie and I have different strengths and weaknesses. She is really good at doing a sketch because she just comes up with these brilliant uh, concepts. <laughs> um, and then I will take her concepts and put them on AutoCAD and that ensures that the lines are straight and the circles are round. <laughs> you know because uh, it, it is difficult to draw a straight line or, or a, a round circle. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where people get hung up on worrying about whether or not they can even do stained glass. Mm -hmm. they, they, they think that they can't do it because Ooh, I can't draw a straight line. <laughs> I was helping a student the other day with a pattern and we needed a circle. And I just went and got a, a ball a jar, uh -huh. a canning jar, and we just traced it. And he went, I never would have thought of that. <laughs> well, that's, that's great. Hey, yeah. it's a circle. <laughs> yeah. Now me as a draftsman, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of it because I would go get my compass and, mm -hmm. and do that. He's you know. a technical guy, you yeah. know, I'm from the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but so whether or not you develop your own pattern or you do one that we've already created, you still need to make a copy, right? You've got to, yeah, well you start with the sketch and when you're starting with the sketch, you research. Okay. You're going to research, you're going to look at magazines, you're going to look online, you're going to go, you know, travel <laughs> to different places, whatever. You're going to find something that really speaks to you. And that's where you start. You just find this picture or this design and you bring that home. And that's kind of like the number one step is yeah. to research your design. And every once in a while you'll find something that just sings to you, that just, you just, you can't help yourself. You have to. Remember that, I think you ta uh, wrote that down, uh, that, that one by uh, Waterhouse. John Waterhouse is one of our favorite artists, and it seems like we can look through a, a book of his paintings and think, oh, that one would look good in stained glass, that one would look good in stained glass, and some of them we have done. Yeah. And one that we've called Eve, and one, I don't know, a couple of the Women of Faith series have come yeah. from Waterhouse Designs because he, you know, we, we just are inspired. That one called Eve, um, what we did was we found it and we decided that we wanted to propose that we would do uh, it for a, a client, and it was, and so we drew it in an oval. I yeah. ran across that pattern the other day. Really? Yes, I'll show you. <laughs> Maybe we'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had that, and here it was. It was oval, and it was beautiful. And when we got done with it, we were just so excited because we thought for sure we were going to be able to do this for this client, and then we never heard from him. <laughs> and I was just devastated. <laughs> and then we decided, okay, well, we'll just make it into a rectangle. And do it into our Women of Faith series, and I think that was our third Women of Faith, was it? Film, yeah. you know, something like that, you know. Yeah. So that well, was one that was really inspirational, and yeah. we just knew we needed to do that one. Another artist that I think is so fun to look through his work and find ideas is Peter Max. Oh, that one you did you know, that was. Yeah, I did the Umbrella Man, and it is just so fun because I loved just doing different colors of his. Cold, yeah. you know, and it yeah. had made no sense the colors in there because they were like a patchwork, but uh, was so fun. There, there's almost a um, an animation to that uh -huh. to that particular window. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. almost you look at it and you could almost see a little cartoon version of it. Yeah, you know, it's just that would that would really work. That was. Yeah. A, uh, well, and that brings us to the second thing is that you might see like. 
the water house painting, well, it's, it's very detailed, very yeah. intricate. And so you couldn't just do all of those lines in well, stained true. glass. And so yeah. you have to be able to simplify your pattern. And, um, and that sometimes is difficult because you have to see it and sometimes you just have to draw over it and say, which shapes will still say what I want it to say, but you know, not take away from, from the integrity of the design, but you gotta be able to cut the pieces. That's true, and um, sometimes we found that since the window was going to be smaller than we had originally designed it, we had to take out lines to simplify it because mm -hmm. the pieces became so small right. that they were going to be nearly impossible, or it would be silly to, to cut pieces that small because then you put your foil on them and they disappear yeah. completely. And, so, and you have to let the glass tell the story a little bit yeah, too. Yeah. You know, sometimes if you're wanting to do fabric, you don't want to cut all the little folds, but you want to get a piece of glass that has that nice flow. design yeah. and flow. So if you're letting the glass kind of tell the story and, and be a part of the picture, you don't need so many pieces. That's true. And oh, there's, there's so much to selecting the glass and today we're talking about the pattern which can be really artistic so you have to have artistic ability in order to draw the pattern or when you're developing the pattern it doesn't have to be you're just copying somebody else's and you don't have to have a lot of talent well so, I think a good place to look for patterns is coloring books oh yeah and that sure. way you can say, well, you know, here is a, a picture of a rooster, and that's, you know, what you want, and you find it, and those lines are simple. And they're, that's true. And so that's a really good place to start. Is a coloring well, book. they used to be simple. Just recently oh, they've yeah, introduced yeah. all those new coloring books for adults, and oh my goodness. Yeah, that's some a of good those... place to look, too. Yeah, I've yeah. seen some, like, there are mandala coloring books or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fun ideas. Yeah, look there, too. <laughs> Yeah. 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 So. so, and as you're looking and researching, you're going to find lots of different ideas, and you think, yeah, well, I only need one right now. So keep a folder, you know, and well, keep those idea. other ideas. You'll go back to them, or you'll go back and say, what was I thinking? But either way, yeah, keep a folder of your work, your designs, and, and some people call that scrap, don't they? Okay. I, <laughs> now, I don't really keep a folder. What I do is I just keep all of the old AutoCAD drawings that I've ever drawn. But you, you, know? so you save new pictures too that you've found. Oh, well, that's you true. just do it on the computer. Yeah, You're that's the tech true. guy. <laughs> so, that's true. Yeah. So um, another thing, and this is maybe on to another step, but I'll, I have also found that quilt pattern designs really lend themselves to stained glass. That's true. So many times. Oh, I look through, I have a couple of favorite uh, books, the uh, Barn, what is it, uh, Barn Quilts and American Quilt Classics. Those are two books that I've seen that I've looked through and I just get, yes, I want to do that one and I want to do that one. <laughs> she got onto a kick a, a while back where we were doing, uh, we did a whole bunch of barn quilts and they were really kind of fun. One of the things about them was that they were so easy that we just knocked them out in no time flat. They yeah. were just really quick. Yeah, you're doing a nine patch. Yeah. You know, and so it's just very easy. And they it just really lends itself to the stained glass. Yeah. In fact, we did those, we did some 12 by 12s, and then we did a smaller 6 by 6. Uh -huh. Remember, so they were, they were kind of fun. Yeah. I don't know, um, why did we, uh, well, we did some, and then we that was enough. We were done with that. Yeah, once in a while I'll, I'll see another uh, quilt block that I think. But I you need to you go should back do that, that one. Huh? <laughs> you bet, you bet. Yeah. Well, and you have a, a or we have an Etsy store where a lot of those patterns can be found, right? Well, that's true. Okay. We have a lot of. Uh, uh, we're we're putting them up at, gradually. Um, in fact, we've even talked about doing some patterns that we haven't actually built. But we kind of go back and forth because we like to, I don't know, we like to have a photo of the, of, mm -hmm. although I, I must say I've got one up 
that I put up, and I only had one photo of it, and it just didn't look that good at all. So. <laughs> oh well, that's alright. <laughs>